I'm Patrick Humphrey, President and CEO of the GBA, and we're thrilled to see a packed house today. This is a really exciting program we have. Uh, this is a series, as many of you know, around economic development. Today we're going to be talking about activity in the central part of the county. And before we get started, I did want to uh, ask Reverend John Martin to come up and give us our invitation. Reverend Doctor, sorry. Just Jim. <laughs> Just Jim. Thank you so much, Patrick. As many of you know, today is National Day of Prayer. So I certainly feel honored that you chose me to say this auspicious prayer this morning. We have so much to be grateful for, so much to be thankful for. So let us pray. Dear Lord God, God of gods, we praise you, we thank you for this glorious day, this wonderful time. We thank you for all the bounty and goodness that you have shown upon Gaston County. And Lord, we do pray that this continues. For so many decades, we've experienced loss, loss of fortunes, loss of industries. And now, Lord, we are on this cusp we are on this new day, so please continue to lead and guide us, help us to make good decisions. May the things that we do and say, may they benefit all of the good people here in Gaston County. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, John. And as I look out in the crowd, there are so many distinguished individuals here. I'm not going to begin to call folks out, uh, but it, it is a great showing this morning. So. Thank you, everybody, for coming. Uh, before we get rolling into the heart of the conversation, um, you're going to hear a lot about growth, and that's, that's an obvious thing in Gaston County. So with growth comes change. Uh, it's physical change. It's congestion. It's new people. And so there's an effort afoot, to, as we speak, of Gaston Vision 2040, so seek input on what you think we should look like as a community 20 years from now. And it's really important to get a, a broad spectrum of feedback on this. So you'll see at your tables, there's a QR code and a little uh, pamphlet there. You can click on that and go to a very short uh, survey. You don't have to attend a, a full session. Please give your feedback when you get back to the office. Take a second, probably five minutes to fill this out. All of this information is going to be collected over the course of the next two months, and then there will be an implementation plan, which is where the hard work comes in, but it first starts with getting your feedback. So if you can, please take a moment to do that. All right, on with the show. So today uh, is a continuation of this series. We started in Bessemer City a couple months ago and talked about growth, and it was a phenomenal conversation of both giving perspective from the public sector. So we had city managers talk about what was going on in their municipalities. That will be the structure today. And then we had a couple of uh, private sector developers discussing why Gaston, why now, what brought them here to put their capital at risk to develop in, in Gaston County. So it's gonna be the same format today. We'll have three city and town managers here, Michael Peoples from Gastonia, Maria Stroop from Dallas, and Jonathan Blanton from Ranlow. So they'll give some updates on what's going on in, in their towns and cities. And then we have three developers who will come up and really have a just a conversation about what I suggested before of what's driving their interest and in, in their investment here in Gaston. So hopefully that, that, that balance of public and private will give you all a great perspective of why the growth is coming here and it's not going to stop. And so this, you'll hear this theme throughout the course of our conversations, whether it's advocacy, whether it's small business support or economic development, this change in the wave is, is not going to subside anytime soon because everything's relative. And relatively speaking, this part of the country is really attracting people. So how can we have this growth uh, happen with us instead of to us is a really key approach that we're taking. All right, so um, next up, let's, Let's get into the conversation. So I'm going to ask, I believe Michael Peoples Gastonia is up first. Let me just, yes. So Mr. Peoples is the city manager of Gastonia, and he'll talk for a couple seconds. There's really not much going on in Gastonia. I'm <laughs> really excited about Dallas and Atlanta. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. 
morning. Good morning. All right, this sounded actually pretty good. I'm not going to usually, you know, I usually say, oh, come on, let's get more. But this is a heck of a cloud, uh, crowd in here. Look, look around. Look at it. It's totally packed out. Give yourself a round of applause for us. All right, so I do have a couple of slides. Um, 30. So I'm going to be very visual, and, and I say that jokingly, but not really jokingly. Uh, I do want to see if my elected officials uh, can raise their hand and so I can acknowledge them. I know Councilman Jim Gallagher, Councilman Charles Odom. Anybody else sneak in? <coughs> thank y'all for being here with me. And thank you for your leadership. All right, so on with the show. So we do have in Gastonia Economic Development Strategic Plan, and here are the, some of the things that, that we have as goals, and here are some of the things that we show as progress. Uh, I'll let you read these, and then I'm gonna show you some visuals of some of these projects, and we'll talk a little bit more about some of the highlights. All right, we're gonna be hearing from some private developers like what Pat was talking about. So I am not gonna get into those two projects. I'm gonna let them do that. And then I don't know if there's gonna be time to answer questions afterwards, but you know, I'll stay around after the um, presentation if you have any other questions. So, all right, so here are some of those things. You should all be familiar with the tech park, right? Uh, here are all the people that are in the tech park. If you haven't been through the tech park lately, Please go and drive through. It's um, it, it's always interesting to me to see how much progress is being made over there and about how full the tech park really is. We only have two sites there left. That's that's it. We're almost full. So um, I know Donnie Hicks and Economic Development is working really hard with the county to try to complete this project. But just across the street. You have this right here, Apple Creek, which the county has done a phenomenal job with in uh, not only constructing this with all the necessary infrastructure, but then starting to attract and complete and fill this industrial park. So it's it's a little scary about how successful Gaston County and Gaston has been because we're, we're, we're looking at probably some additional spaces, right? And, and so Gaston County has done a good job identifying some of those in, in Cherryville and Belmont and other places around the, the county, of course. Here's another one that you might not be so familiar with. If you're traveling 85 south towards Greenville, Spartanburg, Atlanta, there's this big site here on your right, and it is this big, 872,000 square feet. So some of these monster, monster buildings are being built. So over on the border of Lowell and Gastonia, you see the biggest building, I think the biggest building in the county right now. It keeps going, going, <laughs> you see the trees, and then you see through the trees, it's still the same building, you're like, oh my God. So this one's gonna be about like that too. So putting it in perspective, you see Amazon over there, 485 and 85, that's about 900,000 square feet. So this one right here is gonna be close to that size. So not only industrial growth, uh, we're experiencing here in Gastonia, Gaston County, also some uh, travel tourism. I think this is an old picture. I think I took this picture um, probably a month ago. I think they're further along. Hopefully True opens up by the end of the year, okay? And so this will be our newest hotel addition, it's a healthy product, and it's right there on New Lake Road, close to Greenville. It's about 100, 100 rooms. Does anybody here from Caramel? You're gonna correct me if I get anything wrong. All right, so anyway, Caramel, if you haven't seen it, Belmont making a huge investment in that community, all right? Uh, we do have the main campus here in Gastonia, though, right? So here's a rendering of what they're doing with the critical care tower. And you see all the statistics over here about how big this building is and how many units they're going to, to add. And hopefully that spring of 2023 uh, opening is, um, is still still pertinent. I know there's challenges, of course, everybody in this room knows the challenges with supply chain and everything else. So uh, hopefully that's still, still the date. There's another rendering of what that's gonna look like, how much money they're investing in this tower. 
and this is how far they are already along. And I know Caremont's done a fantastic job getting ahead of some of the supply issues, ordering materials, still and things before. So if you haven't been by there, it is pretty impressive. Center City Crossings, going to be connected to this parking deck right behind me. All right, they are already under construction. We had a, a ribbon cutting, the first one I saw in a parking day with real dirt um, because of the rain. So it's very, very interesting over here in your bottom left. A rendering of what it will look like up top and a rendering of what it looked like whenever we were beginning the construction work for that. So a $25 million investment, 90 brand new residential units downtown. Hopefully one of many to come. Okay. Uh, some people don't think of economic development and think parks. Some people do. Some people think about quality of life, uh, certainly preservation of open space, and that's very important for uh, Gastonia and Gaston County too. But we're going to talk about Linwood Springs and Howes Landing. Howes Landing just was approved by the City Council unanimously, the largest residential development in the history of the city. It's about 900 units. It's close to Martin Luther Park. So, Linwood Springs, who played golf there? Anybody? All right. Yeah, I did too. They had some of the best hot dogs ever. Cheap, really cold beer too. Um, <laughs> so it was a mitigation project a long time ago. You know, if you purchased this property for a project that you may or may not know about, and I'm not even going to say the name because it hurts my feelings every time I, I think about that, that road. But anyway, they bought this property so that they could build that and so no longer needed it. So we asked the OT and the state of Oklahoma, we're like, look, can we... Can we have it? No, you can't have it, but we'll lease it to you for 30 years. So we entered into a lease with uh, DOT, and now we're working on Linwood Springs Park, or whatever it will become. It's 138 acres. It is huge. So we have completed the master plan. We'll be submitting some grant applications uh, from Part F, uh, Recreational Trails, and anybody else that wants to give us money, I'll pass a hat right now. <laughs> so uh, we had all those amenities that you saw right there planned, and this is multiple phases, multiple phases, multiple millions of dollars for this. So uh, it's very exciting. It's going to be a regional park, complimentary of Crowder's Mountain. Crowder's Mountain is just right across the road there. It's so beautiful. So we're, we're looking forward to that. And, Certainly that added quality of life. How's landing? All right, that's, I guess, what it looks like with a big Duke Energy transmission line <laughs> in the background. It's not gonna look like that soon. Um, here are some of the things, 877 units, and here is what that will look like whenever it's constructed. And that will begin pretty soon. Um, that is Suncrest as the developer, and those are the same folks that uh, are doing Nolan Farm right now on Union New York Road. So, I don't know if you can see these numbers. Okay, I'd rather walk around it. Maybe it's better you can hear me now. All right, so do you see the numbers here in the bottom? Yeah. And, and the numbers are important. 2,382, all right, approved. 1,729 proposed. 4,111. These are apartments between 2019 and 2022. But the greatest thing about this map is, look how widespread this is across the city. It's not just in one place, it's all over. And this is what Pat was talking about with growth. Well, it's coming, well, it's here. All right, single family, about the same thing. You can't see this number. All right, so 4,749 pending, approved over 3,000. And again, it is all over the city. Amazing, amazing. So, you know, we, we have to prepare ourselves for that. Um, I did have a few notes about what I thought as a municipal leader and as a manager, uh, we have to prepare ourselves for. Certainly transportation, we all know that that's key. Uh, the water and sewer capacity, always a key. Um, open space, we talked a little bit about already. Uh, and then working with development partners, having those relationships, you know, because it's a give and take with developers and, and cities and, and citizens, really. So having those partnerships, having them strong so that you can uh, work together through thick and thin, things take a long time to develop. So uh, if you can develop those relationships ahead of time, it's great. And then 
incentives, select incentives. Incentives make the deal complete, but it doesn't make the deal happen, right? You can't just incentivize a project and then it's, it's glorious, everybody wins. It's just the last thing to get it over the edge. So those are, those are some key things. Um, very key in, in this project. Hopefully everybody knows about the Fuse District, right? Hopefully, if you don't, I'll give you a ticket. You can sit with me. <laughs> um, the honey hunters are what, 10 and 1? 10 and 10? They haven't lost yet. Yeah. They lost the first floor. Opening floor. Opening yeah. First floor. Bad luck. They need to come home. They didn't, they didn't lose here. So. Uh, they're doing great this year. So the Fuse District. This is a beautiful picture looking west towards Kings Mountain, our neighbors, and Crouch Mountain. Um, just a beautiful picture. Uh, Trent Mill looking at the ballpark of Crowders. This is what it used to look like, if you don't remember. I let you in, great place to stay. <laughs> Sears, Sears was wonderful commerce for us in 1980 something. And then it closed, it's been closed ever since I've been a guest in Kennedy since 2005. So that's what it used to look like. So this is what it looks like now. This is as of Google Earth yesterday. So some streetscape improvements around the ballpark, of course. Tritton Mill, beautiful, uh, 84, I think, 85. Uh, several of them are occupied already, and they're gonna have their groundbreaking June 10th. Um, and then we have Dirty Bull Brewery. Can't wait to get this place open so that I can have a cold uh, IPA. And they are already established brewery in Durham. So they already have a lot of this figured out. It's just getting their place open here. Uh, and it's gonna be fantastic. And then you have the Coca-Cola development. That's right on the corner across from the YMCA, which we're going to hear about in a minute. All right. And so we do have, whenever we were developing the Fuse District, some development pads directly adjacent to Caramont Health Park. All right. So that's what you see in pad C and D and A. And so we're working with Velocity and Brandon Bellamy, the owner of the Honey Hunters, on getting those full. You know, COVID, I don't know if you know, was a little bit of a setback for some things. <laughs> Maybe hospitality, ooh, pretty tough. Office, still really tough. Um, family, housing, not so tough, but really we want a good mix of things. So we're continuing to work with them on getting this developed. And so this is what that could look like. These are just renderings, of course, but it's going to look completely different once these parcels are developed. But this gives you a good idea of what that might be like. I can't wait for that. All right, so I think we're holding questions, Pat. Are we holding questions until the end? And we want to hear from, from our wonderful peers in Randall and Dallas. So I think uh, Mr. Bland is up. All right, John. There. Well, good morning. Thank you guys so much for being here today. This is a wonderful crowd to have together. It's so wonderful to see so many people interested in economic development, interested in Gastonia, uh, Randlow, and Dallas. Uh, certainly, thank you, Steve and Patrick, for uh, hosting us here today. We, uh, I, for one, am very excited to be here and certainly appreciate you guys, including Randlow. That's not necessarily something that would have happened a few years ago. So I am very glad to be here, very excited to talk about something that I truly am excited about, and that's the future of Randlow. And that's, again, something, not something I could have necessarily said a few years ago, but I'm a walker and a talker, so I'm gonna be moving a lot because I'm very excited. But first of all, my name is Jonathan Blank. I am the town manager for Randlow, North Carolina. I've been there for a couple of years now, just celebrated two years with the town, and we have a lot of exciting projects that are going on. We've received a lot of wonderful news over the past few months, and I wanna share a little bit uh, with that um, with you all today. First of all, here's Randlow, and that peak right there is Spencer Mountain. That is 152 acres of land that we voluntarily annexed uh, last fall. So we are very excited about that. Randlow is about 1.8 square miles. We have about 4,511 people that call Randlow home. Um, a lot of that growth and development has happened over the past 20, 25 years with some annexation projects that have come into play, new houses that have been built that really changed the face of Randlow. What was once just a small mill village has turned into really a uh, huge suburb, a suburb of Charlotte, a suburb of Gastonia. So uh, a lot of great things going on here. In regards to economic development, we 
have taken a very, um, a very meaningful approach to economic development, starting with infrastructure, coming up with a plan, preparing, and then creating a vision of what we want to see Randlow doing uh, 20 years from now, 40 years from now, and all of that starts with infrastructure. When I first got to Randlow, the biggest issue that we were facing was a data distribution system. I mean, lines that were put into the ground 100, 120 years ago with the mills that were meant to service three, 400 homes that are now servicing 1,600 residences. So what we did is we started working with some engineering groups, we started applying for some grants, and we started getting denied for some grants. So we submitted numerous grants to numerous agencies, but uh, we had some issues with our finances. We had not submitted an audit to the local government commission since the school year 16, 17. So that's a bit of a disadvantage for those of you that aren't familiar with local government. That's supposed to be in by October 31st each year. So that was one of our first, uh, uh, our biggest hurdles were uh, getting those audits up to date. But I'm very proud that two years later we are current and we um, have awarded the fiscal year 2022 audit. So we got those audits in place. We started applying for those grants. Like I said, we were denied for those grants. So we decided, okay, what have we got to lose? Let's go to Raleigh. Let's let, ask our legislators, hey, can you help us? We have demonstrated that we have a need. We demonstrated that we have a distribution system that is failing. We demonstrated that we have serious problems that are putting us at a disadvantage. We're not gonna be able to entice any type of residential or industrial development if we do not have the capacity to be able to provide them water sewer. So we passed a resolution, Alberta commissioners adopted a resolution last March that uh, identified very specific projects that we wanted to see funded. And Raleigh didn't hear our pleas. We got uh, around $6.5 million in direct allocations out of the uh, latest budget from the General Assembly. Uh, Senator Burr chipped in another $2 million out of the Appropriations Act uh, a few months ago. And then we, of course, got some money out of the Ma uh, American Rescue Act plan. So we're looking at right around $10 million that we're gonna be investing over the next couple of years. A lot of that's gonna be in infrastructure. A lot of that's going to be upfitting distribution, our distribution systems in areas of town that do not have access to fire hydrants areas of town that we have three quarter inch uh, water lines that are servicing six, seven, eight hundred homes. So we're going to be upfitting that, hopefully being able to entice some more residential development and certainly being able to uh, have the capacity to bring in um, some industrial growth through there. So we're very excited about this money. Uh, we've adopted some special project grants in order to be able to uh, provide for this funding and we are working with engineers now to get some bid, package, uh, bid packets out and that includes um, renovating some of our parks, like Michael said. I mean, parks are such a huge part of economic development, whether it's residential or industrial development. I mean, people want to have a wonderful quality of life where they live. So parks, we're gonna uh, renovate parks, bring them up to ADA standards. We're gonna renovate some of our community buildings. We're going to, again, invest, uh, invest in water, sewer, and then build some roads. So we are very, very excited about that. Uh, this is our uh, most recent up-to-date capital improvement plan. This was a big portion of what we've been working on over the past year, identifying where our problems are and then strategically, uh, strategically looking forward with where we want to invest, where it makes the most sense to start renovating and upfitting some of these lines. So we're looking at uh, these total, the water road improvements and sewer maps, around $25 million worth of improvements that should have been done 25 years ago, probably. So we've got a plan, we are preparing to move forward, and these are a, uh, a big portion of where we're headed in Randlow as far as infrastructure. We're also working on uh, completing our comprehensive land usage uh, uh, plan, our comprehensive uh, future land use map. And a big part of that is in this blue right here. This blue is really what we are categorizing as our downtown area. Um, we had worked with a couple of uh, consultants, Christian Associates, and most recently in focus to come up with what can we do to give Randlow a downtown town feel? Because uh, who's been to Randlow? Anybody? Why? Somebody tell me why you go to Randlow. You live there. I'm sorry. Carpet one. Man. Carpet one. What else? Wheels. 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 So we have a few things, but mostly people that are coming to Randall are passing through Randall. They're going to Dallas, they're going to Stanley, they're going to Gastonia, they're cutting through. I mean, Randall doesn't have what you would consider 
a town feel. It's a community. It was a community that was built around mills. It was a community that was predominantly founded around the textiles. And now that the textiles have left, we're trying to fill that void. We're trying to see what we can do to bring people into Ranlow, to entice businesses to come to Ranlow, and to continue to provide a quality of life for the people that live there that, um, that is adequate. So we have that downtown uh, blue zoning that we're working on, and we're uh, working to conclude our comprehensive land usage map. So we're very excited about having that plan that I talked about at the beginning, preparing and then coming up with a plan and then a vision, a vision of where we want to go, what's important to our residents and what we can do to continue uh, to see Randall grow and prosper. And a big part of that and a big, uh, big project that we're working on right now is a uh, project with Carolina Thread Trail. I mentioned earlier that we annexed in 152 acres of Spencer Mountain into the town limits of Randlow. Um, the Carolina Thread Trail is wanting to put a trail that will connect from Randlow into Lowell, into McCaddenville, into Cramerton, into Belmont, Mount Holly. So we're very excited about that. We're very excited that we can really build and market Randlow as, hey, come, come hike Spencer Mountain in Randlow. Get a hot dog at Wills. Maybe that can spark some more development. Like, again, parks, recreation, something for people to do. As soon as people see that people are coming to Randlow, they have a reason to come to Randlow to stop. I think that that's going to be very advantageous for the town to be able to capitalize on that. So we're very excited to be working with the Thread Trail to be able to have a uh, recreational opportunities for people that live in Randall and then people in the surrounding areas to be able to come in. So we are very, very excited about that. And this is the last uh, portion of, uh, of my presentation, and that's that vision. We worked with Creech and Associates about two years ago to come in. We identified, it po identified pockets of economic growth and what it would look like if we revitalized some of these mills, some of these textile buildings that are sitting vacant or that are being used as consignment shops, storage, what could we do? What would the mixed use of those buildings look like? What could we do to get Ranlow that downtown feel that I talked about? So these are some renderings with uh, the vision that we're planning, uh, opportunity for all this retail, a new town hall, police department, right on that main drag in Spencer Mountain Road. So we are very excited about the direction Ranlow is going, very excited about the possibilities that we um, that are on the horizon, and certainly excited about spending that $10 million to really upfit some needs. So again, I'm very glad to be here with you guys today. I I have uh, one of my elected officials here, uh, Mayor Pro Tem Katie Cordell, who really I have to give credit for bringing me here to Ranlow. She was elected in 2019 when Ranlow was in a much different position at the time, and she really spearheaded some of those changes, working with me to amend the uh, town charter to adopt the council manager form of government, and then bringing me here as uh, the first town manager of Randlow. So glad to have Katie here, and I have two members of my staff here today. Um, our town clerk, Sarah Rowan, who put this presentation together for me. Uh, Sarah started with us in July of uh, 2021. When I first came into Randlow, we were in a, uh, a tough spot with personnel as well as, uh, we'll just call it a tough spot. Uh, we didn't have the work, we didn't have the finance office, or there were some challenges that we were facing. So Sarah is working on her master's at UNC Charlotte in public administration. She's been with us since July, done an excellent job helping us out with, uh, with billing, collections, and wearing a lot of hats. And we have our new finance director, Ms. Amanda Elsey, with us here today. She started January 31st with us. Uh, Amanda came uh, to us from Augusta University, uh, where she was working in uh, business finance, a HR, a plethora of things for numerous years down there. So we are very excited to have her. She's done a great job coming in, helping us with this budget that we put together. So, so much of being successful in economic development and in um, and local government is having a good team in place. So I'm very grateful to have a very supportive board of commissioners working together to accomplish great things in a great place and a very supportive staff. So guys, thank you so much for being here today. Thanks for being here today. Thanks for being here Dallas. Um, we've been working on several projects in Dallas. 
Again, we have experienced growth based on the 2020 census. From the 2020 2010 census, our population grew by a third, which is a lot for a small town. We're right now at about the 6,000 uh, mark on our population, so that's a large growth. We're wrapping up a project currently with the Department of Commerce Rural Planning Center. Uh, it's called the CERI Program, Community Economic Recovery and Resiliency Initiative. It's focused on downtown economic development. And we'll be having a presentation to our board at our May work session with hopefully to adopt an action plan in June. So that's been an exciting project. We've had uh, a work group that we assembled from local citizens and business owners. We actually have one of our work group members here, Monty <coughs> Monteleon, who has been very helpful with our group and, and planning for Dallas. We're also beginning to explore some other options to fill gaps that we have either in our uh, at downtown area, in our commercial and business community, looking at some feasibility studies to move Dallas forward. As you know, Dallas, again, is the historic center of Gaston County, and that is part of our actual uh, seal still, is our historic courthouse. <coughs> we went through a project with the state and national register, and just last month, we're able to get our historic district boundary increase to the national register. So the, the small, if you can see, the lighter outline here on the lower right of that graphic was our original boundary. The darker boundary to our west and northwest of town is our new expanded historic boundary. So we're excited about that and, and, and beginning to build on, on being able to uh, be able to use that as one of our, our identities as historic Dallas. Um, again, talking about residential growth, we've all been experiencing, as I said, our growth has <coughs> experienced almost a third. What you see here in the red outline is our current town limits. The green is projects that have been approved, zoning passed, and it, as you can see, we've had 672 single-family homes, 240 multifamily homes, we're 912 total in process, on the books, in some process of beginning. We have one area of breaking ground already. Under review, we have an additional 224 single-family homes and 99 multifamily homes for 323 total, and that is in the yellow. The orange, larger parcels up toward what is our north of our town, and then our southwest of our town, or southeast of our town, excuse me, is another potential 300 acres of development interest. And as you can see, and I think Michael touched on it, you look at our current boundary, this is both all the way around our county, <coughs> north, east, west. Uh, we can't go very much further south because then I bump into Michael. So. <laughs> 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 but north, <laughs> east, and west. So those are our areas. As you can see, interest all over, all around. So that is, those are some of the things that we are looking at. Again, they bring challenges. Infrastructure has been spoken of also. We're currently in a project, actually, with Two Rivers to be able to come up, become a partial customer with them, which will help relieve some pressure on our wastewater treatment, to be able to work on that growth. And we're looking at some options in our water treatment also. Dallas is an electric uh, provider, so we, we have a strong electric grid in Dallas. We've done a lot of work in that over the last number of years and are in pretty good shape, we believe, for the next 30 years for our, to be able to provide electric in our community. Some of the commercial things that we have going, these are the two that are gonna come online the most in, in, in the nearest future. One is Papa's and Beer. Some of you may have visited one of their locations. I believe there's one in Shelby, Asheville, several places. This is in the old North Star building. If you've ever been to Dallas, the North Star district. Um, unfortunately, during COVID, it closed. So they will be occupying that building. So we're looking forward to that. And then the other is a combination Hungry Howard's Penn Station subs, which is going to be at the entrance of Ingalls. If you've ever been to the Ingalls in Dallas, visited the Starbucks there. That's going to be there at the entrance, and those two will occupy the same building. So those are coming online. We also have had, uh, actually during COVID, 
had a bakery open, KPLA Bakery, as well as Sammy's and those were thriving in our downtown. I'm very glad to have those. The most exciting thing that we have coming is the Aquatic Center. And that announcement was made a couple of weeks ago. So Gaston Aquatic Scene, and I know there's at least one member of that board. Are any of the other of you here? Debbie was here, Debbie Winter. There she is. Anybody I'm else? on the board, but I did work with Gaston okay. Aquatic. So we are so excited about this. Um, we were able to uh, work with them and come into an agreement. We had some town property that suited their, their needs. And so this is going to be right on 321 across from Gaston College. So very visual there in Dallas. Um, they're gonna be building approximately a 34,000 square foot facility cool water 50 meter pool as well as a warm programming pool with a zero degree entry um, about 1200 plus elevated spectator seats this is going to serve a lot of different purposes um, there'll be swim instruction for adults and children there will also be uh, therapy that will enhance health and well-being and then uh, provide a training center and competition venue for area swim teams we don't think it's going to be a very good resource for our schools and for Gaston College and Belmont Abbey. So we're so excited. We believe this is going to be a big driver and uh, this is going to be such a great addition to the Dallas community. Dallas is a great community, very hometown feel, and we believe that this is going to fit perfectly into Dallas and, and bring more people into our community to see what a great community that we have and the things to offer. Um, you can go right through Ingalls parking lot, grab your Starbucks, and go right to an event at the Aquatic Center. Um, hopefully, they're going to be breaking ground at Mandy Williams this summer, so that's super exciting for us, and we believe that's going to be another economic driver to bring interest and business and residents into Dallas. Um, again, being as, at the crossroads of Gaston County, we have a lot of traffic coming through our downtown. We have approximately 19,000 cars going through our little town of 6,000 people every day. So again, we wanna capture some of that traffic and provide amenities for people. Um, I do have one of my staff members here also, Nolan Gross. It's right here in the middle. Um, Nolan has been an excellent addition to Dallas. He's our development services director. So he's heavily involved and we're trying again to make him more involved in our economic development program moving forward. We were able to add a planner to help him out. He was a one-man show there for a long time. So we were able to add a planner position to be able to free him up to do more economic development for Dallas. So thank you again for having us here. Thanks to all three city and town managers. Uh, Jonathan, you never disappoint. Um, I'm very shy. With your energy, that's right. You're coming out of your shell, we're glad we can help you with that. I, I, I do want to just, so all this is good, and I do want to make sure we, we are honest about growth. Growth is change, and human beings don't really like change very much, and it's coming so rapidly, we have to understand that it's not all good. I mean, these projects are great, uh, but there is going to be arguably some downside to this. And I, I keep looking over at Dr. Booker, who's probably panicking. You know, in all of these households, there are likely going to be some children in there. So schools are going to be impacted. It's a very systems approach. We need to think about all of these things. A public safety is critically important, where this growth isn't going to occur. So projects are wonderful. Projects are really kind of the, the end game of, of why people come to gas and invest. And that's our next, our next session here. So I'd like to ask uh, Caleb Moore to come up to North Point Development. Uh, Michael mentioned his project there on 85 and Cox Road. Uh, Jim Marasso, many of you have probably heard of Web Custom Kitchen. Uh, Jim's done a lot of work in downtown Gastonia. And then we have Mark Miller with Highline Partners, and he's going to talk about his plans for the old YMCA right next to our building. So please, please join us here up front, and you've got mics there. I, I'll ask in whatever order you sit. So, and Caleb, if you could just talk a little bit about the project, we didn't get all the real nitty-gritty details, but it's a it's a big project, as Michael mentioned, and people are probably interested in that. Of course, Jim 
folks know about Custom Kitchen, but you're doing a lot of other work in downtown uh, Gastonia. And then Mark, it's it, we heard from Michael about what's going on in the Fuse District, and I'm guessing that's of interest to you and why that prompted you to look at some development. So I think the, the group here really wants to hear why Gastonia, why now? This is private sector money at risk. Um, so <coughs> take it away, Caleb. And thanks for being here. No problem. Uh, so my name is Caleb Moore. I'm a regional vice president for North Point Development. Uh, so uh, moved down to Charlotte uh, two months ago. So uh, we're opening an office down here as we kind of expand our, our regional presence down in the southeast. But uh, so we're uh, uh, obviously uh, starting uh, Gateway 85, which is our industrial development uh, and gestation and role uh, program on that one back uh, January 2021 uh, with phase one. So those, those two buildings wrapped up at the end of last year. Uh, we're on the one yard line to get a, a lease signed on that second uh, larger building. So uh, and then that first phase we uh, completely, uh, completely leased. And then as Michael mentioned, we've got the, uh, the project, uh, Project Hearth, million and a half foot building uh, that's going up right off of, of 85. So I know Michael said that the Trinity project was about the same size, but it's about twice the size if you were counting. So I thought he's not measuring it's <laughs> just <laughs> big. <laughs> uh, so you know we're really excited about that project and obviously uh, you know with, with you know some of the tenants that we're bringing to the community you know uh, couldn't do it without the support of, of the community. And that's one of the biggest things. You know, that we look at uh, on any uh, any land site that we're looking at, there's, there's a few key metrics that we look um, at with any site. You know, one really being labor. Um, and so with these industrial developments, uh, if there's nobody to work there, then they're not going to work. So uh, we, we do some pretty intensive labor studies in Gaston County. It has a very robust labor pool. Uh, it's something that we're really excited about. And, and we you know, feel very confident that, you know, through the rest of this park that we can, we can support it with, uh, with labor. Uh, we look for access, so access along the 85, the 85 corridor is something that we're really, uh, really confident in uh, with the e-commerce boom that we're seeing. Um, you know, really, this industrial product is really following population growth. Uh, so if you look at Charlotte, you look at Atlanta, that 85 corridor is really, really important. Um, we're going to be really a, a driver for industrial uh, development here, you know, over the next, uh, you know, however many years. Uh, and then, uh, obviously, we look for uh, support and community. Um, and so we've had really, really good support from uh, the city of Lowell and the city of Gastonia and Gaston County, uh, really engaged partners uh, that are, you know, uh, committed to uh, seeing and helping us succeed because they understand that the benefits are not just uh, for us, but there's a lot of benefits to the community as well. And that's what we really try to do when we come in is, is benefit the community as a whole, uh, just, you know, through partnerships, through uh, job creation, um, and, and just through economic drivers uh, through the region. So we've been um, really, really happy with the support. Uh, but I guess just overall, take a step back. Uh, so, uh, Gateway 85, so we've got uh, the total bill is going to be about four and a half million uh, square feet. Uh, so, we're uh, obviously uh, working on the project hard right now, and then we'll be kicking off the next two buildings here uh, this summer. Um, and then, uh, you know, total, total commitment to somewhere around $350 million uh, in, in the park. So, uh, we're really excited about it um, and, you know, really, really proud to, to be here. And, Working against thank, thank you, Caleb. And that's a great point right at the end. So that $365 million of commercial development, that's not bringing students into the school system. It's utilizing the infrastructure we have today. And it's helping us balance what's sort of a little bit out of whack right now with more, more attention on the residential tax base and the commercial. So this really does help you know, from a finance standpoint for municipalities and the county as well. Mr. Morasso. I feel like I walked into my own restaurant. I think I recognize all of you. Thank <laughs> <laughs> uh, you. Know, Patrick and, and Steve, the team for the GBA, I've got to tell you, if you are not an investor in the GBA, it's a great time to think about it. Uh, their goal is to develop all of Gaston County, not just Gastonia. Uh, you know, there's nothing better than putting your own capital at risk to make sure that you uh, survive. Uh, those who have their own money invested typically fight a hell of a lot harder to keep things going. Yeah. I've got you on my pictures over here. So uh, if you look at our initial introduction to the city of Gastonia, uh, it was a very much a public-private uh, 
cooperation that would not have been possible if it wasn't for the council members, our city manager, uh, Michael Peoples here now. We also had Todd, Todd, have Todd Carpenter, but also the economic development team of Christy, Chris, Tori, and Manaya. Uh, they make it so easy for us to develop in Gastonia itself. It's, it was uh, one of the reasons why after we finished with our investment in the web, uh, which pre-COVID we're bringing 20,000 people every four weeks into Gastonia, um, it gave us the desire uh, to invest further. We invested over a million dollars into the web. Uh, it gave us an encouragement to uh, take on the next project. Um, so if I were to walk into our next project under development, this is the old Rustin furniture store built in the 1900s. Boy, was it in need of repair. The roof was caving in. And fortunately, we've got several local companies working on helping us to rebuild this wonderful project too. Uh, this has turned into a $3 million project, but if you look at our past history, uh, the parade right in front of gas, uh, uh, the Rustin, our goal was to turn this into uh, three upscale luxury condos. Odd thing to put in Gastonia, huh? But somebody's gotta be the first. Uh, and three retail slash office spaces on the bottom with uh, plenty of ample parking behind. Uh, this is a labor of love. Uh, Greg Dills, thank you very much for being our electrician on this job to Beam Construction and quite a few other local uh, businesses are helping us to uh, relieve this uh, burden on this project. Uh, it's uh, a long process. There's deterioration in the building that has to be addressed. Uh, if you know anything about me, um, I build it and I build it right. And we are taking the time to do this project correctly. Uh, the next project, uh, if you see the condos in there, I'm sorry, I went ahead and if you go back one. These are what the renditions of the interior of the condos are gonna be. They're gonna be anywhere from 2,000 to 2,100 square feet. The smaller one is at 1,700. 15 foot ceilings. Uh, if you look, there's a mural on the side from the Gaston Gazette. We uh, removed the plaster. This building was built in between two other buildings. There's a Pepsi Cola and a Gaston Gazette mural on one side and a Coca Cola on the other. Those are going to become uh, parts of the condo. If you don't like that advertising, this may not be the uh, historic uh, uh, condo for you. Uh, but this is only going to be a two bedroom apartment. I'm an older guy. I don't want to put on a roof on my house. I don't want to paint anything. I want to take my. I don't even have a dog. I want to take my dog down the elevator <laughs> and walk through Gastonia. If you look at all the, the combination of things that's going on here in Gastonia, you have the Coca-Cola building, which is going to be an incredible venue for us. The, the, the Dirty Bowls, the Trenton Mill. This is uh, going to be a, a great amenity for those who live down there. Who says we can't raise the level of living in downtown Gastonia? I think we can, especially with all people like me. Uh, walking into our next project, uh, this is the old Citizens National Bank building. Uh, I have to have it open by T. Pearson's 100th birthday because he already booked his 100th birthday with me. Uh, the design on this building is to take this historic building. You talked about cooperation. It was essential to work with our city leaders uh, to, to develop this building. They have been so cooperative. I can't say enough good about our city government in Gastonia. Um, they really care about their development and uh, work very, very closely with us. Uh, but we are gonna do a business club where you see the eagle over here. Uh, there's gonna be a business club. The idea is to have five to 600 members in there. Business diversity is what we're looking for. There are, uh, to redevelop a downtown area, you need a diversity of business. Different minds thinking together in a private place where you can actually have those con inter interacting conversations. On the bottom, there's gonna be a, a upscale dining facility. Who says we can't raise the level of dining in downtown Gastonia? Uh, it's been very, very successful so far for us. Uh, and also, uh, we are looking to uh, do some, that's the beautiful restaurant, that door weighs 60,000 pounds. You're more than welcome to try to open it. 100 <laughs> years later, I can still open it. Uh, and then uh, the business club, again, is to attract hopefully people like you into this, into this environment. The biggest thing that I think is the, we are working diligently with the city, uh, Terry Cox with TechWorks, and various other people to bring TechWorks branch down to this facility. Uh, business intellectual is so important in providing uh, the new downtown. And we feel that uh, these are some of the thoughtscapes we have. We already have it designed. We already have it laid out 90% there. With the help of, of Christy and Manaya, we have got put together several hopeful grants down the road that we can apply for. But imagine 85 
business people in Gastonia, where are they going to live? I can think Trent Mill. I can think of our new, our, our new city crossing. Where are they going to eat? Well, there's more and more restaurants in downtown Gastonia, but they're going to need insurance. They're going to need health care. They're going to need many other things. Pretty soon we're going to have a walkable downtown of people living and working and enjoying downtown Gastonia. If I can trouble you to go back one more picture, I also want to show you well, even one more. Uh, if you notice, we are working with the city to put a drive through, not for picking up food at the FedEx, but better access into that back parking lot. This is the betterment for everybody on the block, and that's one thing that the city of Gastonia works for us. How do we work as a business, public, private relationship to better our city? Uh, this will allow you to enter that back parking lot for any events, for any of the business venues back there, for tech works, for the other restaurants, not just for my businesses, but instead of going up 321, pulling into the parking lot, oh shoot, I almost said something else. Uh, you can then go out to Long Avenue, then come down Martin Luther King and come back up Maine. But we feel this would be a better use of our space in community to allow you to come in and out of that, uh, that parking space easier, easier, especially for events. That's all I've got. Um, and that's a lot. We're putting a $10 million investment in our city. I've got to tell you, it's one of the best investments, besides my marriage and my, my kids, that I have ever made. Uh, Gastonia is, is taking on, it's already there actually, and we look forward to you guys helping us to get there. Thank you. Hey guys, my name is Mark Miller. I'm the owner of a development firm in Charlotte called Highline Partners. Um, those are some outstanding projects, Jim, and a little bit of why I think we're here looking at the Fuse District. And I'm, I'm gonna be brief, because Pat, we have questions after this, right? Okay. So, you know, I'll tell you why we're looking at Gastonia, we'll get, because I think those are part of the questions, but um, we are under contract to develop a multifamily mixed-use project at the YMCA site in the Fuse District. <laughs> Thank you, Sharon. <laughs> um, and, and Pat's saying it, you're hearing from Jim too, she's 1.5 million, four and a half million square feet. I can't, I can't wrap my head around the size of that project. But um, the, the story and the narrative that we hear from Charlotte about Gastonia has completely changed. I've been in Charlotte for 15, 16 years. And now we're hearing things, in the, especially the Fuse District, that this is a cool place. This is a place that people want to be. Um, and when I came to Gastonia six, eight months ago, I met Christy and we started doing the drive-throughs. I saw it, you know, I saw this charming downtown. I saw this, you know, the whole Gaston County. I, I think of the Mount Holly, Belmont, and Gastonia, that those were my first introductions. We're just super impressed with what's happening in Gaston County as a whole, right? All of those towns are really coming along. And so, and then, and, and credit to the, to the city and the county uh, in Gastonia for the Fuse District and the streetscapes and how good all of that looks. Like those things kind of help us vision projects. And credit to Christy who said, Mark, you know, this YMCA site, you really need to give this thing a look. We're not that smart, you know, we just need a little bit of push. And so, uh, we, what I liked about this site was the size of it, it's a six acre site. I'll, I'll do a brief little, um, narrative on this project. You see the top left, that intersection, it's a bunch of right, uh, right in, right outs on trim, right? It's, it's not connected, so we're gonna donate that corner of the parcel. So we'll have a full lighted intersection, which is very key, because that's right where the, the baseball stadium is, right? And it's also where you're gonna go up to Trenton Mills Lock and go up to Dirty Bull. You know, right now, if you're trying to go out, you have to do a U-turn, over there on the west side and come back, it's just a mess. So we're, we're and not only are we fixing that intersection, but I'm hoping um, that we can make it a pretty dynamic intersection with, you know, the crosswalks might be pavers, we might have some public art in the leftover parcel here on the top left. I think that would be very cool. And so um, what we have here is a, a commercial building. I think that was important to us, it was important to the city. Franklin Boulevard certainly has the traffic and visibility to support commercial. Um, we're gonna have, we're, our goal is to have at least two food and beverage uses there. Um, could be a morning use, could be a night use, could be a brewery, could be a full-on restaurant. But we wanna have some kind of activity and draw a 
from Springfield. Um, if you're going to an event um, at Care Mountain Ballpark, or if you're going to the brewery, you have something to walk over to and grab a beer or grab a, a meal or something. Um, we're trying to add to the restaurant scene in uh, the downtown. And then you have uh, this, what we call the A building for now. This is a you know, three to four story multifamily project. In between that building and the, the commercial building is this 10,000 square foot park that we're pretty excited about. That's a, a dedicated green space. Not, for, provides a nice separation between the commercial uses and the residential. You know, commercial is gonna be a little bit louder. They're gonna have some smells, they're gonna have trash. So we like that we're kind of splitting those. And that, that 10,000 square foot park is going to have sidewalks, it's going to have fire pits, it's going to have these breakout like gathering points. So we think that'll be pretty dynamic. That first building there, and I'm looking at the slide behind you, that first building is going to have a very urban massing, very architecturally um, downtown type feel. The buildings behind fa face the Yorkchester neighborhood. And I, personally, I'm, I love the, 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 dynamic, um, the dynamics there because I feel like the front half of this parcel is facing the downtown, it's facing the Fuse District, so it needs to have that urban feel, but the back half is like, you can get out of your apartment and just go walk down the neighborhood streets, which is, you, know, you hear the birds chirping, it's just very pleasant. So we're gonna make that feel a little bit more residential with the, the lower, the ground floor units are gonna have these uh, stoops, you know, they're gonna feel like townhomes, um, so it's gonna look more residential, so it's gonna be cool to see the, the um, juxtaposition against the urban building up front and the residential building in the back. So it's a pretty dynamic project. I mean, you know, it's a big enough site where you can kind of have to, you know, a whole different feel as you move from the north to the south. But you know, the big thing for me, and, and Christy and I have talked about this, but the Fuse District is, is so important. And the city has gone out and they've made this big bet with the Caramel Ballpark. And it's awesome. I took my family to the game uh, Friday night. We had a great time. Um, but we need to see development come around that, right, to support the park. Um, and so this is hopefully um, a, a good step in that direction. You know, I think when you hear about Jim Rasso's projects, when you hear about all that's happening in downtown, like you do need the foot traffic to support those businesses, right? This is a 220 plus unit project um, with bringing 300 people to the downtown area. That's a big deal, you know, and that's not the only thing. I'm hopefully that we see Trent Mill and we see other projects come along. But if you, I, I think in this day and age, businesses, economic development, it follows the, the rooftops, right? Businesses follow the people now. It used to be the other way around. So if you bring in the people and you're bringing the foot traffic, I think you're gonna see a lot of things, you know, restaurants and uh, corporations are gonna follow and say, hey, they wanna be here, so do we. So we think this is a pretty important project uh, uh, from that perspective as well. So that's all I got for now. Thank you. Thank you. So just the context of everything we've heard, um, Michael did a great job of talking about things in Gastonia, but specifically the Tech Park and Apple Creek, the EDC Economic Development Commission continues to, and I don't think Donnie Hicks has been any busier than he is today. So continues to do a phenomenal job of attracting these really big businesses. And that historically has been the preponderance of development in gas over the last several decades. That continues and that is extremely positive because those buildings inside employ a lot of people and they're high tech jobs. And so that's a good thing. What you're hearing from these other folks is it's an and proposition. So yes, we're still doing that work and we're able to revitalize some downtowns, bring some energy into the towns across this community, and it's extremely unique. Um, you've heard this before, but 13 municipalities that weren't built by some new urbanist architect last year, they started 100 years ago, very organic, and people are coming to place these days. Oftentimes they, they will arrive because they like the feel of the place, then they figure out the job. So it's a, an extreme competitive advantage for Gaston to have this infrastructure that we have in these, in these towns, and then we're seeing how we're filling that in. So the picture I'm kind of seeing in my mind is a, a really holistic approach to thoughtful development, uh, understanding needs that nobody's really gonna remember. So all of you municipal leaders, I appreciate what you're doing under the ground to make this happen. 
These guys have got all the kudos because they built all the fancy stuff that would have never happened without all that infrastructure. So the system is really at play here in Gaston, and that's great because this economic wave is going to continue. And if we had to start with infrastructure, we would miss we would miss that opportunity. So I had several questions I was going to ask. These guys listened well to what I was going to ask, and they've already answered all that. So we have some time. I really I think. With everything you've heard, you probably have some questions of either town city managers or developers or the GBA. So uh, Steve Diabra is going to walk around with a microphone. So if you have questions, please fire away. Patrick, this is both for this group and for our town managers here. Okay. I know this is really not a shy crowd. So. Mm -hmm. Speaking of not a shy crowd, there are a lot of new faces here, so as I'm going to see Monty, thank you, Monty. I always can count on Monty. Um, I want to see how many new folks, though, have never been to a breakfast series for GBA. A couple folks here. Thank you, guys. Welcome for, for being here. We typically do introductions, but we typically don't have over 100 people either, so uh, Monty. Uh, my question is for Maria. Um, with the Aquatic Center coming to Dallas, uh, what do you think uh, other development might follow with that? Um, we, we firmly believe that a hotel will follow as well as retail and uh, restaurants. We believe it will draw all of that. I'm sorry. I guess I should say that again. So Sorry, I said that before I got the mic. Um, we firmly believe that a, a hotel will be interested in Dallas with the proximity of the aquatic center. That's going to bring a lot of activity, as well as other retail and restaurant opportunities. I actually have a question for, for Caleb. So four and a half million square feet, how do you entice tenants to come here to Gaston. You talked a little bit about the talent piece, but I, and this is really a question in the context of the competitive nature of economic development and how do, how do we position ourselves in competition, not only the Charlotte region, but all the way into Atlanta, up 85 north. Uh, sure, I mean, I think it, uh, it, it again really goes back to this to this labor piece. And you know, not, not only are we looking at labor when we're, um, Looking at different land sites, tenants. I mean, are very sophisticated now to look at labor, and we've, and we've you know lost tenants before in other other sites because you know the labor was market. Um, so I, I think from you know Gaston County's perspective, I mean, I think really everything that I'm hearing here is you know you wouldn't really see a connection between uh, industrial warehousing and, and you know downtown redevelopment and revitalization, but in reality, there's a there's a huge connection there because for us and for this labor and when our tenants are looking at that, I mean, it's very important to have a sense of community um, where it's not, you know, these warehouse jobs, I mean, you see them all the time and, and you know, the, you know, Amazon is, is offering $2 more. We have tenants that it's really important for them to put air conditioning in because they don't want, you know, if, if it's not air conditioned, then somebody probably will go get a job somewhere else. So there's those little, little factors that really play into uh, how the labor pool works. So having a sense of community, having a place where people are going to come and live and be a part of that community, and not just somewhere where they're going to go uh, and you know go drive up to Statesville because it's you know, somebody's paying two dollars more an hour is, is really important. So there's a lot of connections there just with labor and, and community and, and making sure that you know there's a sense of, of uh, stickiness, if you will. Yeah, and connect that dot look, look to to the education system. We're so blessed here at Gaston with Dr. Booker's team, the school system, uh, helping to connect with businesses so that it's not just training to get a degree, but it's a, it's a degree or a diploma and the, the academics behind that really relate to what's needed today for jobs. And of course, Gaston College is a tremendous partner here in this community for that. The same type of thing, uh, to really be focused on what is the need of the business community get people trained up, and, and then it's an opportunity to have a, almost a guaranteed job coming out of that training program. And the GBA is very active in, in that work as well. And, and Belmont Abbey College, while they may not be focusing on the plant floor, there are an awful lot of professional jobs in these businesses, and uh, Gaston College is a great partner there, specifically around healthcare. So their relationship with Caremont 
and elevating uh, the nursing uh, focus is, is really critical for us. So any other questions out there? Debbie Lindley. Hello. I had a great partnership program with Bell and Abby not too long ago with many folks in the room. So. Absolutely, we really appreciate that. The, uh, the mentoring that takes place between the business community and the students at the Abbey has been phenomenal. This question is for Jim. Jim, you, I consider you a pioneer um, because you came into Gastonia at a time that a lot of people have been talking about, it's time, it's our time. Um, finally, things are moving into Gaston County um, and, and we need to be prepared for it. You, you went beyond the talking about the fact that the time is here and you made significant investment and you sort of have been the, the, the beginning point of a major wave of a lot of other development we've seen downtown. So my question is, what did you see? This is kind of a historical perspective at this point, but what did you see that others have not seen that made you want to be here and invest here? And how have you seen the ripple effect of that continue since you have been that pioneer downtown? Thank you for saying that. I appreciate that. Can you guys hear me? What about now? Yes, baby. <laughs> um, the thing that made me most excited was just how I felt when I walked through the city. I, I, I saw a blank canvas, I saw a potential, and I've opened up many restaurants where everybody says it's not going to succeed. Uh, the city was a big part of it. Um, working with them, helping me to, uh, to open up this place. If I failed, I could have survived it. Um, but as I say, if you put your own money in it, your initiative to succeed is a lot higher. Uh, the thing that really won me over was meeting my guests who came into the restaurant and seeing the, the people of Gastonia. Um, as you had said, Mark, uh, Charlotte has not, well, now Charlotte's the gateway to Gastonia, is it not? <laughs> so, our, uh, you know, as I got to know our guests, uh, I pulled my first paycheck out of web one year after I opened. It was a whopping $1,325. Uh, but in talking to our guests who came to the restaurant, they're the ones who really made me want to be a part of this community uh, and tied back to such things as Web Street School, uh, the least of these, and the backpack program for school kids. But it's, it's the population that has made me want to uh, delve further into this wonderful city of Gastonia because if you give, you will receive. And this city has been very, very uh, gracious to me. And I'm very grateful for what they've done for me, my partner, and uh, also uh, the city of Gastonia. Hope that answered your question. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Jim. And Jim is actually serving on our board of directors along with other new faces here, uh, Dr. John Hoosier of Gaston College, Chris Elmore of Abbott Exchange, hopefully I didn't miss others here. But Sharon Padgett said we have time. I think we're, we're out, out of time. time. <laughs> <laughs> Payback. Um, Mark, so in some of our conversations that we've had, you were very intentional in thinking about Gastonia proper um, because you said you could you could bring a an apartment complex from Charlotte that looks like Charlotte, but talk a little bit about what you did with stakeholders and having some real intentional conversation. Sure. Uh, yeah, and the key was the key. All right, the key was to not bring a Charlotte project down to Gastonia, right? Um, so, you know, part of Highline Partners, you know, maybe a distinction factor is you know, so we really try to be thoughtful and creative about our projects. We actually try to do less projects and do them very creatively. Um, so we have a process that we go through, um, and we typically do a little canvas session where we try to invite some stakeholders and. Uh, neighborhood residents that are in close proximity to the project and the goal of that canvas session is to try to get to know you know what makes Gastonia different and what makes that different from Belmont what makes Gastonia different from Charlotte because the truth is all these downtowns all these cities you know around Charlotte in my opinion they all have their unique personalities right and that's what makes them cool you know, Gastonia is very different from Concord it's very different from Cornelius we have projects in those markets and so I love trying to find out what makes these things special, what makes them distinct, 
And then we try to take those themes and then incorporate them into our project. You know, what's great about multifamily, in my opinion, I'm obviously biased, is that you have an opportunity to really direct the design of a project, you know? So you can pull in um, some little things, and like themes that can come out in that design. And that design is not just you know, building facade, it could also be open space, you know? And I, I could go on and on about some of the cool things that we found out about you know, the Gastonia, um, the city of Gastonia. But you know, we're trying to take the, the, the input that we got in that Canvas session and make this project unique. I will tell you that one of the leading inspirational projects that we're kind of pulling ideas from is the, the Warwick YMCA. We think that project was outstanding. You know, it, it's a stunning project. And um, it, you know, someone said, you know, raising the level of dining, raising the level of living. You know, I really think that as, as Gastonia is growing, I think there that this pro we're, we're wanting this project to kind of be a, a another benchmark that people, when they come upon the Fuse District and they round the corner and they see this huge site, they're like, "Wow! Like I didn't know Gastonia had that," because that's what I said when I saw the World of YMCA. And it, 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 it's something that I'm hoping that the people of, of Gastonia will be proud of because these things last a long time, right? So, um, you know, I think Charlotte has suffered a lot from um, a lot, I mean, I, I, all development is good development, but I think Charlotte has suffered a lot from some bland uh, multifamily projects that are built as quickly as possible and moving on to the next project. And so that doesn't work, I think, in the Fuse District. I think you gotta do something special. You gotta make it really dynamic. And so that, that was part of the reason why we did that camera session is to do something that really fits um, Gastonia and, and the Fuse District. Let me follow up to that. So good quality design uh, likely is gonna be more expensive than sort of traditional boxes being built in other communities. So with cost increases, that drives rent rates. And so I'm really curious about, not asking what the rent rate's gonna be, but who are prospective tenants in downtown Gastonia to pay rents that you likely will need to charge to recoup the, the development costs of, of a quality project? Sure. Um, you know, just so we're all we're all aware, like we're in, and y'all know y'all are aware of the hyperinflation markets that we're going through right now. So that's directly impacting construction costs and it's hitting all of us, right? So, I, I, you know, a key part of this for the projects to work in these cities like Gastonia, like Concord, um, you know, there has to be a public-private partnership. Um, the taxes are higher, it's about 50% higher than Charlotte, and some of that's part of the municipal services district that we're in, in the Fuse District. Um, and the rents are about 30% lower on average, just comparing average rent Charlotte, average rent Gastonia. So there, there's a gap right there. And so, you know, th there are, what's great about Gastonia is that they are they are willing to go through a public-private partnership, and that helps us. And usually, it's through a tax abatement or tax you know um, you know, yeah tax abatement, and that kind of helps us bridge the gap to kind of keep the rents low. I mean, there's the rents are going up. The, the rents are going up in all markets, um, but we have to keep that reasonable to to battle the inflation that we're seeing on the construction side. And I think the greatest tool that we have is the public-private partnership um, on the projects. Is that, is that a good answer for you? Yeah, it, it, it's your answer, so <laughs> yeah. it shows the answer. I, I, just, I think that's important <laughs> to understand cost and quality, uh, and this is not a conversation today about affordable housing, but those pressures are on lower, um, lower cost housing units as well that are so critically needed. So it's a, just an indication of an inflationary pressure. Um, just the rents are different here than Charlotte, so it's but the cost to build is exactly the same. So the dynamics behind these projects they're very very complicated, and um, it's not just draw the pretty picture. I'm educated as an architect; we can draw all day long, but to practically build it and to get either equity partners or there's some bankers in this room, right, to get some debt on these projects. You've got to prove you can get a return. And so when these things get pulled off, there's a ton of work behind the scenes to make that happen. Yeah, 
one from Quilea Malden, still specialty. Um, you had mentioned earlier about the perception of Gastonia in Charlotte and beyond. So in my opinion, I think that's one of our biggest hurdles to get people across the river. So has there been any thought to a marketing plan or any kind of way to get the word out that like what's happening here, I guess, and where we're trying to go? And that's not necessarily directed to you, it could be to anybody on the panel. I could speak on that. Okay. One of the things I like about uh, web it's an instant instant um, survey so when we look at uh, one of the requirements of my management team is to visit every single table to catch our our problems and catch our mistakes we put into the door but the other thing is to do a quick survey where are you from how'd you get here uh, we are pulling from outside of belmont we're pulling into charlotte we're pulling all the way over to south carolina too uh, i keep on saying it overnight success takes 10 years we're seven years into it uh, my reputation or my feelings about Gastonia have changed severely over the last eight years. I'm a buy-in, but I was one of those people who used to poo-poo Gastonia because I listened to all the crap everybody else had to say about it. Uh, that made me a pioneer once I started being here. Uh, there, is, uh, there is a definite focus on outside influences coming into here. It's one of the best investment areas still, although there's not a lot of housing available, there are still some projects available. Uh, we like the feeling of uh, people who say they love coming to downtown Gastonia to dine at not only my restaurant, but the other restaurants, because they don't have to pay $25 for parking. Uh, so two things are happening. We're bringing income and, and taxes from outside the area, but we're also keeping our own center of community dining and, and, and staying and entertaining in downtown Gastonia. I think it's on its way. Uh, one person at a time, the old shampoo commercial, they tell two friends, they tell two friends, and so on and so on, if anybody's old enough to remember that commercial. <laughs> Sorry. Um, I think we're on our way, but this, uh, the GBA is a big part of that, in getting the message out. Participation in the GBA is essential for helping us all work together to get that message out, but I think it's truly on the way. Now, I don't know if you have anything to add to that, or? Well, Jim, if I could take, so the, the GBA, seven years ago started the Gas Mount Side campaign, the GO campaign. And it was started, many people in this room supported that. Uh, it was started to, to raise the level of awareness of the reality of Gaston County. Not just in Charlotte, but frankly, in Gaston County. There are some people who lived through their whole lives and they don't see, they see what they've known. And they've known maybe some things that weren't great, but there's other stuff coming. And so it's an opportunity to raise the level of awareness and that campaign, uh, three-year campaign, went five years. And so we have stopped the official go, but we still talk about successes in Gaston County through, through our communications. The county under Dr. Eagles doing a great job, brought in a new, new group to focus on communications, raising the awareness of what's good things going on in Gaston. Travel and tourism is an enhanced their uh, website to, to drive traffic. That's more 50 miles out, but still changing that level of awareness. So it, it's a collective effort for all of us. And it's it's really, when people get here, it's the experience. And so when they hike Crowders, or they come to Web, or they hang out in Ramlow, and they get a little bit of energy, and they charge their phone hooking up to Jonathan, <laughs> then they, uh, they take that back home, and to Jim's point, then they tell somebody, hey, that was really pretty cool. Um, and I, I we have changed, the surveys show that we have changed those perceptions. They were negative to neutral uh, six years ago, and then a couple years ago we did another survey and they were neutral to positive. So it's shifting, and frankly, as new generation comes, younger people come, um, they don't bring that, that historical context. And when John Boy and Billy finally get off the airwaves, they may be off by now, <laughs> stop talking about it, but it, it will it will also change. Because there's a lot of good here. One more question? We're good? Time? Yeah. Um, just real quick. Oh, my name is Nicole Neal. My husband and I own the Optimum Result Fitness Center of Buckingham Fair Cedar. Um, but my question is when you bring more traffic in, and this revolves around the, the mall, the Gaston County Mall, is there any um, foresight into changing that? Because when people come in, they're also going to want good restaurants, they're going to want good schools, but they're also going to want shopping. And that goes to anybody. So I'll, I'll take a shot of that. I have a little 
history in Charlotte with the uh, and I grew up in Charlotte. So that's yeah, so the I'm Eastland going. Mall. Yeah. So first of all, when you look at a mall, you know it's a it's a big building. Right. Well, it's a big building with a lot of different tenants that have a lot of different easement rights. It's a really complicated one to assemble all that. Mm -hmm. Um, so when people leave those buildings, they leave because they weren't able to make money. I mean, it's a real economic, sort of basic economics. And then you look at retail in, in the world today. Retail has changed. That's why we see all the Amazon trucks, like little ants driving around all day long. So when these buildings don't work, we have to really look at ourselves and say, well, did I shop there? Is that really my behavior now from a retail standpoint? And I think the world is really wrestling with what that's going to be. There won't be malls built anymore all enclosed. It's just not, it's, it doesn't work. So maybe it's a repositioning of that property, but to do so goes back to the dynamics of having been built in, in the first place with all these different owners and operators and the complexity of that. It doesn't say that we, we give up on it, um, but Michael Peoples doesn't own the building or doesn't own the property. So there's not one entity that can drive a redevelopment. And then as these folks have said, redevelopment requires a demand. And so that demand in retail is us. So it, it, that's just gonna have to play out a little bit more before we really figure it out, before developers and investors have confidence that they put their money into a, a different approach, it's, it's going to get a return. We're not the only ones wrestling with it. It doesn't make it great for us, but yeah, it's a, it's a challenge across the country. All right, well, there's a great conversation. Thank you so much for, for being here. We have a couple of events coming up on um, May 12th, so that's next week. Uh, the Professional Women's Association has a social at 530 at Barristers, another great project in downtown Gastonia. We have a business after hours, and so just a quick Got a couple minutes, so the, the GBA is now focused on, we're countywide, but we're looking at the eastern part of the county, the central part of the county. This forum today was about the central part and the western part. Those will be chapters of the GBA. And so the business after hours with MGE services, they are in the eastern part of Mount Holly, and so that will be ultimately a, a GBA East chapter event. We're bringing those back. We have heard small businesses say, we really need that opportunity to interact with other small businesses. During COVID, it was hard. We were brand new a year ago, but we've heard that. And so you'll see a lot more of these opportunities to just come be with your, your potential new customers. Um, and that will be on May 19th. And then the next, Big breakfast series will be on the 26th, and this will be advocacy. So we um, we had one two months ago in Belmont. So we had representatives from the school board, our county commission, and our, our delegation from, from Raleigh. And it was a great conversation. Some people in the room attended that, both as speakers and in the audience. And it's an opportunity to hear elected officials talk about their policy objectives, what's going on in their space as it relates to businesses. I was super pleased that nobody gave a stump speech. It was, everybody did a great job, it was incredibly informative. So we talk about, I talked about complexities of development, complexities of policy making. It, it, it's helpful for us to understand that so we can have realistic expectations of our elected officials. And it's a chance to give feedback. So that will take place on the 26th. So I hope all of you can come to those. And I'm not sure if there's a, and that's it. So thank you all for being here today. We're really on oh, Steve has one more thing. Two housekeeping. If you spoke today before everyone swarms you, let's get a quick photo together so we can do that real quick. And then another way to promote Gaston County is with these proud investor window clings. So if your company has not gotten it, this will save about a thousand miles today for Nancy to not drive everywhere and give that to you. I've got some, Nancy's got some. And one, one final thing, so the gas division 24, if you would please take the card, or go ahead and scan that QR code. Take a few minutes to give your perspective of where you want uh, our community to be in 20 years. And have a great day, thank you. Great job, guys.